I hope you're ready because finally we are taking you on a full homestead tour. <laughs> Hey farm friends, Jacqueline here at Head Family Farm. So many of you have asked for a tour of our farm, of our homestead, and finally, you're getting it today. The grass is starting to turn green. It's chilly out here. It's about 50 degrees, <laughs> even though it's sunny, but we are gonna do this homestead tour, and I hope that you enjoy seeing how we have our animals set up. Everything is always evolving. We are always adding new things, building new things, changing things, and that's one reason it's taken a while to make this video. In most of our videos, we are taking you along for a project. But today, you're just going to get a nice leisurely look at everything that we have going on here on the farm. If you're new here, if this is the first time you are seeing our farm, I am Jacqueline, my husband is Zach, and our daughter is Eleanor. And my husband and I, we both work full-time jobs. We are web developers off of the farm. And so all of this is in addition to our day jobs. I'm also a freelance web developer and Zach is an associate pastor. And so we have a lot going on. And so we really, really love <laughs> everything that we do because if we didn't love it, we wouldn't do it. Uh, Zach says that we cultivate gratitude. Um, gardening is a way that we ground ourselves, that we focus on our family and that we do something with our hands and it feels good. Um, it's so rewarding to eat something out of your garden. We've always gardened a little bit here and there, but in the last two years, we have really, really started gardening uh, to feed our family and to feed ourselves and to have better food. And then our animals, some of our animals give back to us and some of them don't. Some of them are just for our pure enjoyment and they are pets. And we are so blessed um, and very thankful for the life that we get to live here. But I wanna take you on a tour, so let's get going. <laughs> I am standing in one of my favorite places on our property and it's because I can see it all. This is the back porch view. You can see the pond down there, the barn, the goats in the field, the chickens, the silky coop, the chick house, the shop, the backyard, and now all the way over there the greenhouse. Can't wait to show y'all around. So much has changed in the last couple of years of us being here and there is a lot to talk about. Right off of the back porch we have our first flower farm area. This is our very densely packed tulip beds and every day I come out and I pull up the tulips that are ready. <laughs> This one is ready and it's even got an offshoot on it and I've been breaking those offshoots off and replanting them, just making sure that I grab some roots. You can see that there. And I'll pop it back down in the ground and replant it. These aren't quite ready to be harvested yet, but this one right here is perfect. The flower has its color but it has not begun to open this is going to go straight into a refrigerator that is set to 35 degrees not freezing just above freezing this one right here is ready as well I need to loosen the soil around that one that one was planted a little bit deeper get that whole bulb up and by storing the tulips with the bulb attached, it keeps feeding the plant and it doesn't need to be watered while it's in cold storage. Now these, these went past the time for me to be able to harvest them. They would not have hardly any vase life if I harvested these. So we just get to enjoy them. Same goes for this beauty right here and this one. This one, I will harvest it tomorrow, but just a few at a time is enough to go in the cooler. That is a beautiful and quick little harvest and there are over 200 tulips between these two raised beds. Hey, Eleanor. Hi. 
Eleanor is gonna join us on our tour and we're gonna go put these in the cooler and I will show you the barn. Here's my super fancy flower cooler. <laughs> and it's full of tulips. I have very quickly already run out of space in this little fridge. This is a tack room in our barn. We use it for storage. We have two mini refrigerators out here where we store water. But because I'm already growing out of <laughs> my cooler, I am picking up a refrigerator that I found on Facebook Marketplace tomorrow. So I'm excited about that because I have a lot of flower plans for the summer and a lot of uh, fun things coming up that I'm excited to work on and to share with you for our flower farm. Uh, it's just another income stream for our homestead, for our farm. If your homestead is also going to be a business, diversifying your revenue streams are a must. This tack room slash storage room is my hopeful milking area as well. It can evolve over time, but this wall right here goes into the goat barn side of the barn. And Eleanor is over here with our only animal that lives in the barn. Who is this? It is, this is Mopsy, our Angora rabbit. And we're hoping we might get some kits from her. Yeah, Mopsy was bred 28 days ago. I really want to show y'all what I am most and what I found out. What did you I find? I looked at her nest. Oh, she is making a tunnel in there. She's making a burrow. And when you make it, when the bunnies, when Mopsy, when, when rabbits make little burrows, it means that the babies might come. They're going to come soon. And that looks like what's happening to me. We'll give her some more hay. We have plenty of hay over here. She went and met her boyfriend, Willis Jr. And <laughs> I think they were successful because Mopsy is very, very round. She's very interested in my camera. What's up, girl? Huh? What's up? We are really excited about the potential of baby bunnies here on the farm. And we will update you, of course, as soon as there's any activity. I think I'm going to put a, a camera out here. Eleanor is doing something that we do daily around here, which is go on an Easter egg hunt. Eleanor, what have you found? If you're wondering if that is dirt, this that is the speckled. Yeah, it comes out of the chicken that way. Hold that blue one against your shirt. So blue. I get to go on an Easter egg hunt every single day. And it makes it where I get to learn all about the egg. Like you know eggs. a lot about eggs. Yeah, even more. Yeah, you know a lot more. Eleanor, can you go put those in our basket? Yes. Our trash bag keeps blowing over right here. Thank you, goat. <laughs> Speaking of goats, that's what we're going to see next, isn't it? Yes, we're going to get see some goats and not just a chicken. And not just a chicken. We have a lot of just chickens around here. Yeah. Um, before we walk out of the barn, right now the barn is just storage. Um, like I said, Mopsy is the only animal that currently lives in this side of the barn. But that is something we are also working on changing this year. <laughs> goat keeps calling all the ladies to come eat bugs in the barn. I'm hoping to close in this side of the barn again with tin and actually build uh, two stalls right here that can be for goats, that can be for chickens, that could be for some other animal we decide to get one day. Um, but I want to go ahead and start building out some structure inside the barn because right now the only structure in our barn is the tack room. Everything else is just open, and I want to build um, a stall right here as well and open it into that side of the goat barn too so that we have easy access to separate anybody off. The goat barn makeover is totally new. We just started using this space for the goats and so far it is going excellent. They have been in here about four weeks now and we have not had a single issue with the space. 
We are seeing some more food aggression with Willow. She's really dominant at meal times. And I have some plans to make changes to help mitigate that. For all of our animals, we keep their food right outside of their houses, their enclosures. And that makes things really easy for us. But that's also a way that we set things up in a way that when we want to go out of town, when we want to take family vacations, we are still able to do that. And the feed is right outside of every enclosure for our farm sitter. They are having so much fun running and playing. <laughs> We have a cattle panel front wall. Our electric uh, fence charger is up there. It's connected to the power in the barn. We have a hose as an insulator right here run across to electrify this fence. That's what the hot wire is inside of. Uh, that is going to change in the future, but this works really well for now. Um, the cattle panel is not electrified. We don't get shocked if we touch it and it connects right there and it runs all the way out it goes that way back down the hill really far over there in the pasture and around and i love this fencing because we can move it around anything that we don't want these guys to get into <laughs> Inside of here, we have our huge hay feeder. We get a round bale of really high quality hay for our goats. We've got two T posts and a pallet right here uh, just for extra support on this end because this is on a hill. We've got the goat bed that I built. It's just a riser with some old um, outdoor cushions screwed to it and they absolutely love it. They jump on and off it all the time. We have a protein pail down here because it's just good to have one. Um, since we do have some food aggression happening, that allows free range, free choice, uh, if they're walking by it, high protein supplement. It just gives me a little bit more peace of mind to have that. Over here, the goats have an auto water with fresh clean water all the time. Hello, Miss Willow. Hello, Miss Willow. Are you standing guard? I'm not coming to feed anybody. I wanna show everybody that back here in the back is huge. Um, we are planning to build two stalls right here and that still gives the goats tons and tons of room in here. Let me zoom out. Tons of room in here and right here is where I mentioned the um, tech room is just on the other side of this wall so I'm considering making a door right here a milking door where the goats could come through to be milked but that is all when the time comes um, I would like to also build a little bit of a loft in here so that we could store square bales of hay and have just some extra storage in here to kind of help keep hay out of the main part of the barn I think that's all for the goats if you've never met our goat herd, I hope that you enjoyed seeing them. And we do have a new goat that's coming to the farm probably at the end of April. Her name is Muffin, and she is a gorgeous black and moon spotted doe coming from Sneed's farmhouse. And I'm so excited to have her here with us on the farm this year too. If you hear Eleanor coughing, it is full-blown spring pollen here right now. So she's got a cough from that. <laughs> and she's running with the goats. <laughs> there they go again. <laughs> Since December, when we got this ElectroNet movable fencing from Premier One, uh, the goats have been loving access to all of this pasture and I've got the fence off, it's not on right now. But this is what Eleanor does every day. She goes and plays with the goats. <laughs> Great, such a, such a good boy. There go the others. This is our absolute favorite part about having goats. On this side of the barn, we have a few projects happening. <laughs> we have our fig tree up here that we'll get uh, figs off of in about mid to late July. 
we have our Playhouse Ceramic Hoop conversion that is in the works. And I'm not sure if it's gonna stay over here or if it's gonna move, but it is just sitting for the moment. And all of this is where I started the flower farm last year that never started. <laughs> um, we tilled the ground. This was a zinnia plot two years ago. We tilled the ground and we had hundreds and hundreds of zinnias come up around the border of where my flower farm area was gonna be. I'm really glad that I didn't end up starting this last year because it was absolutely not the right time for me. We had so much going on and I know that this space is gonna get a lot of love and care this year because I have a tunnel that is gonna be going here. I can't wait to share that with you all. We have so many projects in the works, but one of the challenges of um, growing anything on a farm is farm animals love to eat pretty much anything that we like and they love tender baby plants uh, chickens will devour any tiny baby plant that there is and in order to grow out here i'm gonna have to grow in that tunnel so this is the right time last year it was not the right time i'm so looking forward to being able to do that we're gonna fill it full of sunflowers and zinnias and cosmos and tons and tons of other flowers that I have seeds for in the house. Over here is just a beautiful pasture area where Eleanor has a play area. We have a loquat fruit tree. We've got the beautiful, even if it is invasive, um, wisteria. It smells wonderful right now, all in those trees. One of the biggest reasons that I was willing to say yes to this house and to this property uh, when Zach begged me to look at it <laughs> was what's in front of me right now. Our pond is about two acres and it is fully stocked with brim and largemouth bass. It does not have any catfish in it. Uh, the previous owners drained the pond and took out all the catfish and they just wanted to go with bass and brim. And it is so fun to fish in. We love fishing out here but it is the main water source for all of our ducks and our geese and you can see here they make all of their little pathways up through the grass all of the little areas that they go down to the water and we usually keep it weed eated all the way down to the edge um, but we were not able to do that this fall because our weed eater died <laughs> when it needed to be done. But we have a new weed eater now, so Zach will be out here very soon clearing all of this brush all the way down to the water's edge. And I love just our very easy slope down into the water. Right here is our favorite spot to spend time as a family. Um, in the summertime, we have a huge shade cloth that goes up at these posts, but we are changing that. We are actually hoping to use these posts in our back porch uh, roof build. And, and we're going to move the pergola that is in the backyard down here and put a metal roof on it. Aren't the goats just beautiful hanging out on this hill? I cannot wait, the weather is getting so nice. I can start coming out here and enjoying my morning coffee sitting in the swing. I don't want to make y'all dizzy, <laughs> but I just absolutely love this view. So around our pond, the main trees that we have are willow trees. They're not weeping willows, but they are willows. They have that beautiful rough bark and curly leaves and we trim around the bases of the trees every year. When the water level drops a little bit, we'll get to those. But we have them at different areas around this end of the pond. There's a very nice wide trail that goes across our dam and all the way around the pond. And you can fish all the way around it. Yeah. 
I joke and say that our animals have the best views on the farm, but it's really true. <laughs> the goats have a gorgeous view of the pond. The silkies up there, look at these goats. <laughs> hey babies. When your animals are happy, it just makes you so much happier. Yes, it does. Y'all make me so happy. Yes, you do, Biscuit. Yes, you do. The ducks are waddling through the sunshine up there. Our pond is a runoff pond and our ground retains a lot of water. You can see there's mud over here. There's mud here. Ooh, I just scared a fish. And there's standing water right here. We've had rain for the past two days, off and on rain, not super heavy rain. The pond is up quite high. We do have a drain in our pond. It is way over there. It is that white pipe. And then we also have an overflow dam. Our pond is a runoff pond and we have a ditch that flows through the pasture right here. It's got water in it right now. It flows over to what I call the holler. This is our holler, holla holler. <laughs> I'm sure where you're from, depends on how you say that. But this is where the runoff water collects. Right here, and there's a pipe down in there that goes under this pathway and flows into the pond and that's what feeds our pond now some water of course does run down this way and we actually have some running through this corner pasture area as well and the chickens love hanging out down here this is their chosen place in the summer is down here in this area under all the trees and in the brush and you can see them down here now. <laughs> I could watch chickens scratch in the grass all day long. I really could. I love this hillside of our property. I love walking up here. This is one of my favorite areas and anytime I do a photo shoot, I like to come over here because the sun comes through the trees just beautifully. I love this top side of our property. I think if I had to, if I didn't have to worry about taking into account water <laughs> and runoff because this is the high ground so the water comes from up here, I would choose to build my house over here. Look at this view. I would love for this area right here to be my front yard. I like where our house sits now, up there, way up there. <laughs> but this view with the pond and this hill, I love it. Right now, all of our free range chickens, they either sleep up in what I call the big pen. I'm gonna take you up there in just a minute. Or they sleep in here, which this is what is going to be converted into our mobile chicken coop with the electronet fencing around it. And I'm excited about that. I'm going to build rollout nest boxes along the sides of this. It's going to get a total makeover. It's going to be way more lightweight. I can pull it around with just a rope. I'm looking forward to that. You know, there's always a new project. There's always an idea in my head. There's always something to be done. But I have some things out here that I need to move up to the shop and the barn. But right here, we have the most useless animals on the farm right here. Did you hear that, honeys? You are useless. But that does not make me love you any less at all. This is Peanut, our cooney cooney pig, 
rooster are we're really not sure probably was meant to be a meat pig but he is a rescue um, the previous owners passed away and their house was sold at auction and they had farm animals in the back and rooster's mama had had a litter of piglets and rooster came to us from our neighbors when he was just itty bitty and miss lucille right here you'll notice every now and then she has a limp um, something happened in her shoulder. She's been fully checked out. No infection, no problems with her hoof, but she has some type of shoulder injury uh, that she sustained probably a year and a half ago. And she's had a limp ever since. It doesn't seem to bother her. Uh, it doesn't seem to cause a lot of pain or anything. But Lucille was our very first farm animal. She was not intended to be a rescue. She was a purchased pet. But she was in such poor health and bad shape when we got her. She had hog lice. She had mange, which is scabies in humans. And unfortunately, Eleanor and I both contracted that. You can see her limp right there. Sometimes it's more exasperated. She's really just stiff when she first gets up. But I tell you what, what we have learned about pigs is we already knew this, but they, were, they are smart. They are very, very smart, which is why you see these two strands of electric wire right here. They have two strands on the interior part of their fence, and then they have another single strand out here closer to their fence. And it is because Mr. Rooster, Mr. Rooster, he likes to go to go on jolly walks over to the neighbor's house through the fence to their orchard that's just on the other side of the fence. Don't you? Don't you? The other two, not so much. Lucille, she's never gotten out. Peanut followed him the last time, and that's because he broke through that side, and they were rolling the entire barrel of chicken feed all around the big chicken pen up there. <laughs> You had a jolly good time, didn't you, Mr. Rooster? Hmm? Didn't you? We love our pigs. Our pigs are just pets. And another thing we know about pigs, out here you have beautiful lush grass and greenery growing up. And what do you have in the pig pen? <laughs> Dirt. Dirt. But as long as the electric fences are working, as long as those hot wires are on, nobody escapes. Everybody is safe. Nobody's digging holes in the neighbor's orchard. And they are happy, happy in here. Uh, they are our scrap eaters. They are our questionable egg eaters. Eggs are their absolute favorite treat. And they get them quite often because the ducks, we have 21 uh, waterfowl, and they like to lay their eggs just wherever wherever they feel like it at the moment. Only a few of them nest. Most of them just drop their eggs. So if we're not sure how long something has been out or if it's been in the rain and the weather, rooster eats it. They have their shelters over here and they are made out of IBC totes. They have two of them and these three little pigs that are not so little squeeze into one. <laughs> They pile in one and sleep together. I still don't know how they do it, but they manage. I never see them getting into them. I always see them coming out. Right on the other side of the pig pen is our biggest garden. This is our in-ground row crop garden that is reinforced and protected from the chickens. is the main gardener around here. I am the garden <laughs> helper. This was his joy last year and gardening has really helped get us through some more down times emotionally, especially in the winter. This has been a refuge for him to feel like he's still doing something. <laughs> in the garden right now, we have two rows of hoss baby leaf lettuce mix. Um, this is getting very close to us just being able to come out here and snip off whatever we want to take in and eat 
and it will keep growing. It'll come back again. Um, it, hopefully, our spring isn't super warm, causing our lettuce to bolt really quickly. It's looking pretty good right now. Um, the, the temperatures are going to stay around 60, mid 60s, high 60s for several weeks. So we should have some good lettuce harvests, especially right over there in the middle. It's looking very, very nice. Here we have three rows, I'm sorry, four rows of onions that we overwintered. We have Sofire, Vidora, and on these three rows, sorry, four rows, we have our onions that we have overwintered. It's time for them to be fed. Um, we have Sofire, Sapello, and Vidora, which they are all a type of Vidalia onion. They're in the Vidalia family, and they are looking great. We should start to see bulbing really soon. Right here, we have onions that are about to put on a big show. These are our Tom multiplying onions from Haas. And Zach thinned these out to one bulb back in, I think it was early or mid-November. And you can see, look, that was one onion bulb. And look how many we have. These are endless green onions like chives. And... We love sharing these with friends. We can cut them anytime we want to, but they're about to flower. They are all about to bud out and flower and the bees are going to love On this final and very productive row, we have our garlic and we have elephant garlic. And then at the very end, at the back, we have some uh, garlic cloves from the grocery store that we planted. All of these rows are about 30 foot long. So these are our garlic from the grocery store. And I really think these are gonna have some nice big bulbs too. Looking forward to preserving this garlic, aging it, freeze drying it, grinding it into a powder, having our own garlic powder, making garlic salt. So looking forward to preserving what comes out of this garden this year. And I've told Zach, um, as we're newer to this, he needs a seed starting schedule. I need a harvest schedule so that I can start pre-planting all of my time and ways that I'm gonna preserve this stuff. That is our March row crop garden tour. Now we're off to see more chickens. Over here is our temporary goat pasture. This is where our goats were housed while they were babies. And we have a hay feeder in here. We have a temporary enclosure over here that was a chicken run. I'm getting ready to reclaim this as a chicken run. And I actually might turn this space into either uh, row crop flowers or we talked about corn, but this area, it really doesn't get great sun. And so we're thinking more flowers that don't require as much sun or even just maintaining this as a little pasture area for if we need to separate off any animals or anything like that. You can see all of the free range chickens hanging out out here. <laughs> They love to be here. Our female goose, Bob, currently has a, a nest. The last I checked, she had about six or seven eggs under her. This is the second nest that she's made this season. The first nest uh, she was not successful with. 
and she's picked a better spot this time. It is closer to the uh, pen where everybody is fed. Up the hill to see some chickens. Up the big hill to see some chickens. <laughs> First stop up the hill is the pigeon aviary and the silky coop. The pigeons, they are pets just like the pigs are. They are for fun. And I call it the silky coop, but this is the special chicken silky Polish cochin coop. And they are sitting on a mess of eggs right now. Look at this, look at all those broody hens stacked on top of each other. Y'all can't come out. I'm coming in, but y'all can't come out. This coop is due for a deep cleaning. We did a deep bedding method over the winter and it is time for a full clean out. We use pine shavings in here and mulch. Cover that up, cover it. Okay, cover it up. I'm trying to talk. Eleanor, 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 is this where all your babies live? Who is this? Ariel. That is Miss Ariel. Eleanor's Bantam coaching. Sweet, sweet Ariel. Ariel has a wonderful personality. Silky chickens will rarely use a nest box. They lay all over the ground and then they go broody and they collect eggs like this. <laughs> and we have to take them away from them because some of them get rotten because they don't sit on them consistently. And that is just the life with silky chickens. In here we have a nest box that the Polish primarily lay in, but it is a roll away nest box and we collect their eggs right here. We currently have four Portuguese tumbler pigeons right here. They have little tiny beaks and they're known for doing flips in the air, but we do not free fly ours because of potential hawk attacks. Then we have two homing pigeons that were gifts uh, to Eleanor from Mary Carl over at Cockhill Farm. They are doing wonderful. And our big surprise that is in here right now is potato. It's potato. I love and what is potato? Potato is a Portuguese tumbler pigeon. Hey, potato. A Portuguese tumbler pigeon squab that we have named potato. <laughs> Baby potato, as we have named them, is about 14 days old. <laughs> and they are feisty and adorable. We're only going to stay in here for just a minute so that the parents can tend to their babies. What's over there? It looks like three. It's two over here. Now about nine days old are two homing pigeons. Aren't they just so ugly? <laughs> they're not cute. They're so ugly. I think they're so ugly that they're cute. But if I had to pick between the cuter baby pigeon, these are homing pigeons. And this is potato. And potato is just really, really cute. So is the Portuguese. You never know. Hey, I'm adorable. Watch. He's going to get me. <laughs> Does it hurt, Mama? No, not at all. What does it feel like? He said, I'm going to get you. What does it feel like? Hey. We're not going to bother him. I don't want him to get stressed out. What does it it's feel time like? to clean your nest. What does it feel like? Does it feel like this? It's time to clean your nest, Potato. Yes, it is. Does it feel like this? No. Does it feel like that? It feels like this. <laughs> Everybody is finally taking good care of their babies. Um, it has been a year of our Portuguese tumbler pigeons laying eggs, sitting on them, hatching them, and then not caring for their babies. 
Um, the longest that they have made it was about eight days with a clutch of two and then they stopped caring for them. And I was getting ready to move a pair to another area to see if they could be successful away from all of the other pigeons when they hatched potato and he's now made it to two weeks. And so we're in the clear now. I hope you enjoyed a look at the silky coop. I'm sure it will also continue to evolve. Now we're on to what we call the big pen. This is the pen where the bulk of our chickens currently live or sleep. Um, any, anyone that is out walking around is always out walking around and they sleep in these coops right here. They have doors on the back side of them. These are four by eight runs and they have roosting bars in them where they sleep. We don't feed anyone in there anymore. There are still hanging feeders. We don't feed anyone in there. We have two small um, coops right here where we currently have a broody hen and one sitting on eggs. Let's see if there are any eggs in this one. I collect eggs first thing in the morning and then during evening chores. Yeah, there's two eggs in there. So I'll get those this evening. But these are just very simple uh, structures made out of plywood. It has a raised floor in the bottom, has a cutout in the front, and then the whole roof is on sturdy door hinges with tin and a handle. And we did that modeled after a coop that was already here on our property when we got here. And these were gonna be our breeding runs where we could separate off um, like a trio or a quad of chickens and have a dedicated space to keep that breed separate to ensure that our breeds were true. But everything has changed so much since then. We decided to only work with two dedicated breeds, Marans and Lavender Americanas. That's a variety and a breed. <laughs> um, Lavender is the variety, Americana is the breed, and they are true blue egg layers, and then our Marans are that beautiful dark chocolate layers. And then everybody else is general population, but we have our flocks covered with very specific roosters so that we know um, our hatching eggs, our chicks will lay interesting egg colors, blue, green, green with speckles, uh, really, really dark green with speckles, dark brown with speckles, peach, pink, uh, just all kinds of colors. We call it chasing rainbows with chickens. <laughs> the main way that we feed our free range flock, they get lots of treats, they get scrambled eggs fed back to them all the time is we have a 150 pound auto feeder. This is made with 90 degree PVC angles and I can pull this one out some and show you, but it just pops in there and the rain doesn't get inside of here. It does splash mud up on the sides, but the chickens put their head in here and they peck and they get the feed. And I've got to do chores because they're almost, almost out. But that gives you an idea of what that looks like. You can see they just stick their head in. Hey girls and boys. This is our blue lace red wine dot rooster. His name is Big Daddy. <laughs> This is a black Americana pullet. And this is a Barnevelder. She lays a beautiful medium brown egg with speckles. This is one of our black copper Marans roosters. His name is Walker Texas Rooster. And he adds that gorgeous dark brown egg color to our free range flock. We don't use him in our pure Marans breeding because he has such a oversized comb and he has white in his tail. So we don't use his genetics in our pure Marans. This one is a buff laced red wine dot. It's a beautiful chicken. 
All of our roosters are friendly. They are very used to us. This is a blue Americana. Hello, beautiful. She's also my friend. This guy right here is a second generation olive egger rooster. He carries blue egg genetics and lots and lots of dark brown. And so he passes all kinds of beautiful shades onto his offspring. A huge thing that we hope to work on this year is water. All our entire farm is powered by a hose pipe. And I can tell you, I'm not a fan of all the hose pipes at all. Y'all, before I came out here, I cleaned this. I dumped this. I sprayed it out. Watch out, Orpington girls. Watch out. Watch out. I dumped this. This is the pool. And they love the rocks. Yeah, I know. This is the pool that the ducks play in. That's what it's here for. But they make it look yucky. So quickly. Have the rock in here. They like it a lot. This is a constant though. Over here we have another project area. Our pigs used to be down here. This is some remnants of their house that used to be down here. But this is a huge chicken run. This is 18 feet long by 10 foot wide and 6 foot high. Um, it is in shambles at the moment. I had to move it from out in the pasture all the way up here, and that was interesting. Um, this is going to be a enclosed area, though, for our morons that are currently housed in what used to be the duck coop. This is the quack shack, and I am going to be turning this into an enclosed dedicated coop for our morons. Then they'll have an automatic chicken door that lets them out every day into their enclosed run. And since we sell our morons hatching eggs, we cannot have them out mingling with the general, general population while we are selling their eggs. Uh, now we don't do this all year. This is just a springtime thing. And so they do get out in the general population and they do get to free range for majority of the year. But for the spring season, they are cooped. So this is being turned into a full coop. And then they're gonna have all of this space out here to enjoy scratching around and not have to be inside their coop. This is our beautiful Splash Copper Marons rooster. <laughs> I'm excited to convert this into a coop because I will show you our Lavender Americana Coop. This is our Lavender Americana Coop. And it is the perfect size for this breeding flock. We have eight hens and I'll show you the inside. This was the first coop that we built. They have roosting bars that are higher than their nesting boxes over here on this side. We feed them inside of this coop. They will escape if I let them and <laughs> they cannot come out. <laughs> On this side, we have our nesting boxes. I can't wait to build some of these for our marons. But we just take this, clip it up here, and we have full access to the nesting boxes. And there's two eggs. We'll leave them in here. I'll come get them uh, this evening when I do chores. Hello, everybody. Hey, pretty girl. My favorite thing about this coop is they have a window <laughs> and when I'm doing chores at night I come by here and I can see them all perched on their roosts and sleeping. So we feed them on the inside of the coop just to make it easier to access it for us and I know that their food isn't going to get wet. And then on the outside of the coop, we have started putting our waterers out here. And we use five gallon buckets with a self-watering cup on it. I'll show you what it looks like. 
We just cut a hole in the hardware cloth and we're able to push that through and they have access to their fresh water all the time. And they think that I'm doing something extra special to have water. <laughs> so they're all over here. This is what happens to me all the time, y'all. I forget that it's on. I forget what it's on and the ducks have a really nice time playing in the mud. Did you forget too? Yes. I'm ready to get back in the sunshine. How about you? Yes. <laughs> She's excited. Oh, the sunshine. Passing the silky coop. Right here. Out of the big pen, we're back at the backyard. And we are standing in front of a very important part of our farm. About a month ago, I did a huge makeover on the chick cottage. And it's called the Chick Cottage because it houses chicks. The Chick House is awesome. The Chick Cottage, it has been life-changing for us to be able to brood everybody in this one tower. And this thing is huge. And we have about one more week of weather that is dropping into the 30s. And then... A whole bunch of these chicks are moving straight outside to enjoy the grass and the sunshine. And then we'll have a new batch of chicks in here. I have some coming in on March 22nd, which is just next week. I'm so looking forward to that. We have our silkies down here in the bottom. They are two and a half months old and they are ready to move out of here. Um, they still fit just fine. Something that we haven't shared with y'all yet that we have added to the farm our jumbo Caternix quail and we had a friend who wanted to get out of quail and so we have inherited her quail and we are learning them that is one reason we haven't shared a lot about the quail um, since we didn't raise these we are newbies we are learning but they are laying which is absolutely wonderful we have about 15 adult Caternix quail in there. We ended up picking up the quail a little bit earlier than we had planned and Zach had some health stuff go on and things kind of got moved around timeline wise here on the farm and I have not been able to do what I wanted to do which is build a quail aviary. Um, we're going to have an outdoor aviary for our quail that is big where they can be territorial if they want to be territorial and carve out their own space. We're not going to house them in here permanently. We will be growing out quail to eat in here. So we will maintain our breeding stock of quail and we will hatch and we will grow out quail to feed us. Um, that is something that Zach really wanted to do. That is a way that he wanted to be able to have some more uh, sustainable meat options here on our farm. We have a lot of friends that grow quail for their families and it's something that we wanted to give a try. If they end up just being pets or if they're not for us, then we will let y'all know, but we will take y'all along for all of that. So one of the big additions later this spring is going to be a fence that we put back up right here. I took down a chain link fence that was in this area last year. It went from here all the way across that direction. This was open and it went from here all the way across to the privacy fence over there. And we didn't have a purpose for it because it was wide open right here. Anything could just go back and forth anyways. And so to make mowing the grass easier, maintaining things back here easier, you can see we've got to fix this flower bed. We need some new, um, railroad ties to do that but we need to put a fence back up to keep the chickens out of the backyard and to stop eating my flowers and to stop um scratching our mulch everywhere they love digging through the mulch and i can't fault them there's tons of yummy bugs in there i know but they throw my mulch all over the patio you can see they throw the rocks out here too that are mixed in to help hold the ground here um we just got to have a fence got to hey eleanor so we're going to be building a fence across here and i haven't fully decided how i'm going to do it but I will share every bit of that with you. I know it's gonna involve some good gates that we can drive through. And remember how I said our farm is powered by hose pipes? Can you imagine what that's like in the summertime when the grass is growing full blast? 
we are constantly moving and mowing around hose pipes. And we have sacrificed a couple of hose pipes to the lawnmower as well. Outside of the chick cottage, we have our shop and right now our Sarama coop, our little bitty tiny flock of four Saramas lives in this coop. But where this is currently sitting, it's not staying here for long because I'm about to build a huge flower bed from this corner all the way to the door of the shop. I am planting what will be a huge snowball bush right here in the middle. It's gonna fully take over. It is gonna be a beautiful bed with perennials, lots and lots of flowers and herbs. And Zach has been doing something right here <laughs> that I have been wanting to do. He just filled this bed full of dirt and we're going to be spreading this out and we're going to be going from that corner to that corner with rocks, making a really nice curve on this corner. But can you believe how beautiful Peggy Martin is? This is our Peggy Martin climbing rose that is just going to take over the shop right here. And look how tall she already is. This all needs to be snipped off. Tracy would be telling me, need to prune, need to prune them. But look how bushy and beautiful and full truth y'all <laughs> the goats got up here and did a number on peggy martin not too long ago not too long ago at all and she's still beautiful look i spy the first buds those are gonna be blooming so soon oh my goodness look oh i can't wait i cannot wait to see peggy martin against the the black color of this shop. And I've decided that I'm painting the shop door black. It's just gonna be black like the rest of the building. Across from the shop, I mentioned uh, I want to build a quail aviary, and that's actually gonna hold quail and pigeons. And where it's gonna go is right here on this corner. And so as you are walking this path right here from the back of the house, there is a gorgeous chased tree right here. There's another chased tree right there. All of this is going to be aviary. And these rocks are going to come around it. We're going to have herbs and bulbs and just beauty around it. That is the plan. So that aviary will be here. We have a massive pile of wood that we cleaned out of the barn in order to move the goats in there. It is still right here. But you have this pathway and it leads you to the shop where that curved bed is gonna be. This bed is full of potatoes. We'll have our potato video coming out very soon. Zach just covered them up because they were sprouting. Look at this. Look at these potatoes already coming through. Already coming through here. That is exciting. Um, this is the start of the potager garden. And yes, there are two dog kegs sitting there. <laughs> But this is the start of the potager garden. And so this is one of our first bed beds. It's gonna evolve and change. We have plans for vines and roses to go up this wall, just like we're doing on this side. And over here, you have our kind of crazy looking layout because this is not how it's gonna be. Um, we shared the greenhouse and the potager uh, phase one design and layout with y'all recently in a video. We have our design, but we have not executed it yet. So these beds are all moving. We originally had an L at each end and they kind of made horseshoes in certain spots, but now we have totally changed it. There is going to be a gorgeous round arbor that goes right here. These are going to be stacked too high, like they are over there, two levels high, and we're going to have a fountain in the middle, and I just, I can't wait. Can you see it? Can you see it? Because I can see it. And Zach has made amazing progress on this greenhouse. It is not done at all, but he got the roof on, and I'm so proud of him. He has done wonderful. She is imperfectly perfect, and she's going to be painted black just like 
the shop. She's not done. Uh, somebody asked us the other day, uh, why did you leave her all mismatched like that? I promise you I'm not leaving her that way. She is going to be that beautiful Sherwin-Williams green black color just like the shop is. And I already told Zach I'm going to be so tempted to paint the bed borders, but I know I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm not going to let myself do that. They're just going to age and be beautiful the way they are. Our next stage over here is going to be, I'll show you on this side. Our next stage over here is going to be taking wire brushes and getting all of this old window glazing off. Um, and I have new window glazing that we're gonna come in and I'm going to go around the windows. I mean, this stuff is just crumbling. Not all of them are this way. Um, these four windows on this side are in rough shape as far as the glazing and some of the paint goes. But then these windows, these came off of a house. Um, they have been maintained. They have been way, way better taken care of. These came from a church friend. She got new uh, windows put in her house before she sold it. And we bought all of, well, not all of them, but we bought a lot of her windows. And so all of this needs cleaned. We're going to be brushing everything down, scrubbing it down. There's dirt dauber nests. There's a lot. There's a lot to do. Um, and then we've got a big uh, opening up there. And on the inside, we are going to cover that with wood. I say the inside, but I may talk him into doing the outside. But it is airtight at the seams of the window. He has um, styrofoam spacers that meet the roof material. So all we've got to do is do our ends and then fill that gap. We have multi-purpose black foam. It's the great stuff that's usually orangey yellow, but this is black. And we were sitting one day and I was like, I wonder if they make black foam, and they do. Uh, so these cracks right here that are too wide for caulk, but too small for pieces of wood. We don't want to use up a ton of wood. We're going to be filling those with that great stuff. And in here, these are panels that he had the idea to make. They are going to be on kind of a pulley system and drop down um, to let heat out of the top. He'll have a ventilation fan over here and he'll build the rest of that out. And we used hardy plank which is like a cement material on the outside. It doesn't rot. And some people were worried about this wood sitting directly on the ground. Well, it's on high ground on this side, so water doesn't sit there. And then on this end, it is in lower ground and we did need to raise it up. And so it's actually up on cement. It's on cement blocks. So this side does not touch the ground. These are also pressure treated boards and they are um, painted. And so we feel pretty good that this is gonna last quite a long time, as long as we could possibly want to use it. Can't wait to start putting shelves in here and Zach to start starting his plants in here. I can start flowers in here, herbs. Absolutely cannot wait to have herbs hanging in the rafters, drying. It's gonna be, so wonderful and what we need and it's going to be a joy farm friends i hope that you enjoyed going on this homestead tour with me um, i enjoy talking about our farm this is where we live this is what we love doing and i hope that you will join us back later in the week for another video we put out videos on tuesdays and fridays i hope that you have a blessed and a wonderful and a joyful week we'll see you real soon y'all have a good one Thank you.